Hello my dear friends, you are on the military summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 26th of May. Today we got a lot of small updates, small updates on every single front line we have and we know. So let's start. And first we'll start from Liman area. If we take a look at Liman, you're gonna see that West Sources map have been updated. We see that, according to the West Sources map, the Russians established control over the north part, north part of Liman, the part of Liman that located on this side of the railroad. This is Liman. And if we take a look at the Russian Sources map, we see that there are a little bit more updates on this map. As you can see, the Russians established control not just over the north part of Liman, but they take under their control some south part of Liman. So let's update the map according to the Russian information. This is the area that is under the Russians. More than that, the Russians start their offensive operation towards this small village. And now they are trying to attack the railway station from both sides. As far as I know, this is the only area that is still under the Ukrainian control. And I can't say that there are some regular forces. As far as I understand, there are just rear guard forces in this area. And the main idea of these rear guard forces to give possibility to the rest of the Ukrainian army to retreat from this position towards this town, Shudrove, Stary Karavan, Brusivka. As far as I understand, there is some small fortified Ukrainian position here and they're preparing their defense line in this area. And most of Ukrainians are retreating towards this position. Today I saw a lot of video how Ukrainians using this road, this white road, and using this road were retreating towards this position. The Russians are saying that they established control over more than 80% of Liman. And they're saying that there are few days left and Liman is going to fall completely and they will get this fortified area and the next heavy clashes we're going to see in this area so this is Liman so this is the fortified Ukraine position along this river Severski Donetsk right behind this fortified area is town Raigorodok and Slavinsk the heart of the Donbas arc operation this is the railway part of Liman the area where the Ukrainians left their rear guard forces and as far as I understand, maybe this evening, maybe tomorrow, these rear guard forces also are going to retreat towards these fortified positions. Now let's talk about Severodonetsk. This is Lysychansk agglomeration. This is Severodonetsk. This is one of the most important area in this operation. And there were no news from this area. We know that there are very heavy clashes. And the Russian sources announced that they're starting their offensive operation toward this town. The Ukrainian forces, the Ukrainian military authorities include, every day they include the information about this town, that the Russians did another attempt of storming this town. But according to the Ukrainian military authorities, every single attack was, uh, Russian attack was blocked and the Russians were defeated in this area. So we didn't have anything about this area. So this situation in Severodonetsk remind, reminds me the situation in Bilogorovka bridgehead. Remember this small back where the Russians tried to cross this river, establish their pontoon bridge. They were defeated in this area. And the, the situation was that it was one of the most important battle in this area and we didn't have any information. Uh, this operation started on, on the 2nd of May, but we start to receive the first videos and pictures just on the... Uh, on the 14th of May. And the same situation is with Severodonetsk right now. We know that there are very heavy clashes there. We don't know the real position of any forces. We know that Ukrainians are somewhere here, like be between Lysychansk and uh, like in Severodonetsk, somewhere here. And we don't know the real Russian position. Uh, the first update we got yesterday in the evening. And according to this update, there were very heavy clashes in this area. This is the bus station. This is the bus station of Severodonetsk. These heavy clashes were confirmed by both sides, and from the Ukrainian side and from the Russian side. Yesterday I shown you the 
like approximate area where the Russians managed to establish their control. I told you that the Russians established control somewhere in the suburbs, but to tell the truth, I did know myself where exactly is the where exactly were the Russians' positions in this area, and a total complete silence from this area. Uh, later, later after we got the information about the heavy clashes near the bus station, we got some information that the Russians are already in the town. But again, we didn't have the information about the exact position of the Russians in this town. And today, somewhere at 5 p.m. of local time, I got the first message and the first update regarding Severodonetsk. So this is the map of Severodonetsk and this is the approximate line, front line in this area. The red line is the Russian positions and the blue line is the Ukrainian position in this area. And the territory between these two lines is the gray zone and the territory of the heavy clashes. So as you can, more than that, this information wasn't prepared by the uh, Russian military authorities or Ukrainian. Uh, the um, uh, source that gave me this information told that this map was prepared according to the local uh, telegram channels. So we, we need to understand that it's not uh, this information wasn't confirmed by not neither by the Russians nor by the Ukrainians. This information was prepared by the volunteers according to the information they got from the Telegram channels of this town. You know that Ukrainian uh, Ukrainians they have uh, Telegram channels almost in every single town, and so this is the map. So let's update this map according to the Russian front line for the better understanding of the situation in this town. So this is the Sever Severodonetsk, and if we take a look, their front line begins in this on this cross, and ends moves along the edge, the border of this town, and uh, um, complete summary on this block. So let's update. This is the cross. Now we're moving along the Severodonetsk. So this is the approximate progress of the Russians by this evening. And that's a lot. And the one of the most important things that the Russians are already in the town. More than that, they established control over these blocks. You know that Severodonetsk is... Uh, uh, this town was built in the Soviet period. And uh, this is the old part of the town. And mainly this part consists of small towns, small buildings. Uh, this like the small old buildings and this uh, town this part of this town is the new part and uh, it's uh, suburbs of the Severodonetsk and as you can see there are just there are only high building with lo lot of floors not like five even more so it's like high position in this town and as you can see according to this map the Russians established control over this area so the Russians they're like on the high level and now they can see the entire Severodonetsk like in on their hand like in front of their eyes and as far as I understand, they're attacking from every side, from every direction. This is everything about Severodonetsk area. Now let's talk about our Zlatoygorska area, the place where the Russians are planning to establish their small cauldron. Uh, as we know, the Russians are attacking towards Vubivka. And let's discuss the situation around Toshkovka, Chehirove and Ustinovka. If, if you remember yesterday, I told you that the Russians established control over the entire Toshkovka. And they put some marks, some icons regarding that. They show that uh, Toshkovka is under their control. But today they updated this map and they show that they established control over just half of Toshkovka. And the second part of Toshkovka is in the gray zone. And there is another part of this town, small town, is Chihirova. It's a small block. It's part of Toshkovka, but uh, according to the local people, they are saying that it's a separate part of the Toshkovka. And we got information from the locals. They announced that this part, Chihirova, is under Ukrainian control. This is the only part that is still under Ukrainians. So let's update this map according to real control. So we can say that the Russians, at least by this evening, had control just over this part of Toshkovka. Also, Ukrainians are have their fortified position in town Chihirova, 
and this is the gray zone between these two lines. This is the gray zone, and now the Russians are still trying to push Ukrainians from this area. But I can say that this is one of the most important area. You know that sometimes if we are talking about the big battles like uh, Stalingrad battle, like Berlin battle, we know that like we talk about these battles. But sometimes the biggest battles, the biggest clashes, uh, solved and uh, not in like big battles on the big fields. Sometimes it's the question of small villages or maybe even small blocks. So Chihirove, this Toshkovka is this uh, this place where the entire battle for this Zolotogorsk cauldron uh, solves. So if the Russians are able to push Ukrainians from Chihirova, only in this case they will be able to cut this road, the road that connects this Zolotoy Gorska agglomeration with the Lysychansk agglomeration. But for now, Ukrainians are in Chihirova and they still have some small connection. Of course, this area is totally under fire control, at least, at least this part of the road. But though the Ukrainians still have possibility to receive supply, support and reinforcement. More than that, Today, in the evening report, the Ukrainian military authority announced that the Russians achieved some success in town Ustinovka. And usually, if Ukrainians are saying that uh, Russians achieved some success, that means that this town is already under the Russians. But let's update according to official report, Ukrainian report, that the Russians had some success in Ustinovka. That means that they established control over some we can say part of this town. I'm not sure about exact streets or houses that are under the Russians, but let, let's update just for better understanding. We discussed Ustinovka many times, and if Chihirova is still under Ukrainian, also we can say that Ustinovka a very nice position to establish fire control over this part of the road, and this with that they will be able to cut reinforcement and supply from Lysychansk agglomeration towards Chihirova. More than that, as we discussed, the Russians have possibility to attack Bilogor. And this is also a hill, some position on the hill. So this is all update regarding Tashkovka Chihirova area. Now let's move towards our Bilogorovka Viktorovka. This front line is under the Russians and according to the Ukrainian military report, the Russians were trying to attack and to increase and to develop their bridge kit in this area. They were attacking towards Bilogorovka. As far as I understand, not entire Bilogorovka is under the Russian, according to Ukrainian sources. But we'll see more than that. The Russians were attacking Beristove, the Russians were attacking the Russians were attacking Nirkova, and the Russians were trying to attack Vrubivka. But Vrubivka totally under Ukrainian control, so it maybe just was like a record in combat, nothing more. More than that, we, if you remember, we discussed that the Russians established control over the town Yakovlevka, but today we got information from Ukrainian military authorities that they, they managed to destroy some blog posts in this area. I can't tell exactly which blog post they managed to destroy, but I think that Ukrainians managed to destroy the Russian blog post in this area. This was like standalone blog post, and this, there was around 15 uh, Russian soldiers Maybe it's just a speculation, I don't know, because I didn't got any improvements or confirmation from any source, Russian source. So just like note from Ukrainian military uh, channels that there was a situation somewhere on this road and that the Ukrainians managed to destroy one Russian blog post somewhere here. So this is all about this area. So the Russians are trying to develop their um, position in this area and they're trying to move towards the north and they're trying to encircle the entire Lysychansk uh, agglomeration group. Now let's move to the south, to this area. Right before I start recording this video, I got the Ukrainian military report, their updates for today, and there were a lot of interesting news. First of all, the Ukrainian side confirmed that they lost town Midnaruda this town. This is a small village, I must say, like, um, I, I can't even say what exactly there, maybe two towns, maybe two houses or something like this, but the Ukrainians, they lost control over this town. More than that, they confirmed that the Russians achieved some success in two key towns, Klinova and Pakrovsky, these two towns. That means that the Russians managed to establish control at least over some part of this town. So let's update this area according to the Ukrainian military 
report. Um, but one more thing, we know that the Russians established control over the entire Vladimirovka and more than that, they established control over, over this Nova Kamyanka. So we can say that the current situation in this area is something like this. In the town of Pokrovska, Midna Rudna is under the Russians. And um, this is interesting area. First of all, we know that the Russians established control over Novozvanivka, but there were no information about Vyskrivka and Pilipchatinia. More than that, the Russians confirmed that they couldn't establish control over Pilipchatinia. And as far as I understand, there are nice Ukrainian position here. There is interesting, there is fortified Ukrainian position in this area. And uh, the Russians couldn't push the Ukrainians from this area. So now I understand that they want to encircle this area and to force Ukrainians from town Vysklivka and Pilipchatinia to retreat towards Pokrovsk or even further towards Bakhmut. So that's why, the, as far as I understand, the Russians have control over Novozvanivka. Yesterday there was information that the Russian established control over Roti Vidrazhenia and today they established control over Midna Rudna. So I think that the picture is something like this in this area. I don't have any confirmation about the this part of uh, Krynichnya, Mironivka, Vizdvizhenia, so I won't update this area because as far as I understand this territory is still under the Ukrainian control. But as we see, they also have a very big risk of being encircled. So I think that maybe next day, tomorrow, they will be forced to retreat from this position towards this plant, this power station. But for now, we have that what we have. And as far as I understand, the Russians are planning to establish control over the town Kulinova. And the Ukrainian military authorities, they confirmed that the Russians have had some success in this area. So we can say that some blocks of this town is under the Russians. Now they will try to clear this area. And if they are able to do this, they will try to establish some block post and fortified area in this town. The same thing they want to do over the town Pokrovsk. So they want to block Bakhmut and they want to establish fire control over the Bakhmut. And we know that Ukrainians, they have a lot of forces there. A lot of tanks, a lot of heavy armor, heavy equipment, a lot of forces. It's a real castle. It's a real Ukrainian castle in this area. Now let's move a little bit. Now let's take a look at this map from zoom out position. This is the current situation. This is the current situation. Now let's move to the south, to the Gorlovka. Yesterday in the evening, the Russian military authorities announced that they started their offensive and storm operation towards Novolugansk. Uh, we don't have any updates regarding this area. The only information was that the Russians managed to establish control maybe over some suburbs and that they're planning to complete this operation. And the main idea of the Russians, of course, to establish control over this power station. This is a very important power station, and you see these lakes, and uh, there are some dumps in this area, and the Ukrainians tried to blow this dam a few times, at least this dam, they want to blow it, and they want to fill, flood this area with water, and that will allow them, that will slow the Russian invasion, and, and slow the Russian offensive operation towards the Bakhmut. So, as I understand, uh, at least the uh, the most obvious plans of the Russians to block Bakhmut from this area and this will allow Russians to develop their operation towards Lysychansk agglomeration because if they are planning to encircle Lysychansk agglomeration without having a safe position on their flanks uh, it, it may be cost them a lot because we understand that Ukrainians they need to start their offensive operation. Uh, there were like a lot of ways how to uh, help f forces in this chance agglomeration and one of them to start their offensive operation towards the flower of Popasna from Bakhmut towards this area. And this is the reason why the Russians are preparing their fortified line just to protect their flanks while they're handling with Lysychansk agglomeration. So this is the Bakhmut area. This is the directions of the Russian attack and the position of Ukrainian forces in this area. Now let's move to the uh, Avdeevka. Avdeevka 
becomes more and more popular uh, among the Russian military sources. Uh, this is very fortified area. This is very small town. And we can say that Avdiivka has the same meaning as Papasna. Uh, this is our Avdiivka. And there are also around in this area also around 15,000 of Ukrainian soldiers. And uh, the Russians want to encircle this army for many reasons. And one of them is that this is a very fortified position and this is very uh, important position for the Ukrainians from strategic point of view. And I will explain you what is the importance of this Avdiivka area. And if the Russians are able to establish control over Avdiivka to push Ukraine from this area, after that they will be able to establish control over entire this area without we can say even heavy clashes they will just push and push and push and the ukrainians will have to move towards for Selidova, towards grodivka in this area they don't have any position where they can um, establish their, con their position they will have to they will be pushed towards Konstantinovka. So what is the benefits of this Avdeevka? What is so important in this area? And the main important thing in this Avdeevka is this rock. This is this is very big hill in this area. So let's take a look at this hill. This is the hill on the Russian sources map. You see this this is our Avdeevka and this is the hill and it's a pretty big hill. This is the hill from like uh, real view. This one on the back. You see this hill. It's like a Dievka hill. It's a very big hill. And from this hill you can control a lot of territory. And this is the picture from this hill. It's you, I couldn't find a better, better picture. But I think that you understand where is the horizon and how much you can control from this hill. It's a very nice ice position. From this hill you can control the over every movement. You can control the entire Donetsk. You can control from this area everything around this town. Everything. And of course, the taking control over this hill is the key region to the, the further offensive Russian operation and the operation of encirclement Kurahova group and operation over the Konstantinovka. So this is the battle for hill and this is the reason why the Russians are attacking not in front of Avdeevka because in this case the hill will be on the back of the front, Ukraine front line and using this hill the Ukrainians will be able to correct the artillery fire over the Russians. So that's why they're trying to attack the hill right in front because in this case they will be able to cover this hill with their artillery position and the Ukrainians won't be able to have their position and it's very difficult to protect such hills when you attack like in front of this hill and because you need to establish your positions you need to uh, hide somewhere for, i'm talking about ukrainians so this is the reason why the R russians are trying to surround this town and move uh, to the top and attack this avdiv from the north and that's it for today thank you for watching subscribe to my channel put your likes and enjoy your day. Bye-bye.